Greetings everyone, and welcome to ASMR Gaming News. Please hit that like button, sit back, relax, and let's begin. So we have a lot of great news this week. Uh, first big piece of news is for Pokemon. So Nintendo or specifically the Pokemon Company announced a special Pokemon-centered Nintendo Direct. And during this special live stream, they officially revealed the upcoming, you know, big next generation Pokemon game that everyone was expecting for the Nintendo Switch. So, this new Pokemon game is going to be called Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. So there's going to be a Shield version and a Sword version. And in the trailer, they showed off the starters, uh, the starter Pokemon that you're going to be able to choose. Uh, I personally like the one called uh, Sobble, S-O-B-B-L-E. I think that's how they pronounced his name in the Nintendo Direct. As you know, Pokemon always have really unique names. So, um, there was Grookey, Scorbunny, and Sobble. And I really hope I'm saying Sobble correctly. I, I, it was either Sobble or Sobble. I think it was Sobble. But he seemed pretty cute. Uh, I liked how he was, like, acting in the trailer. Uh, he was kind of, like, shy, but attacking from, like, uh, hidden areas, like sneak attacks, stuff like that. So... Uh, he kind of reminded me of like a stealth kind of sneak attack style Pokemon, so I kind of like that. Uh, I'm sure his later like evolutions in the game are going to look even cooler, so look forward to using him as my starter when I get Pokemon Sword sometime later this year. And overall, like reception to this announcement has been extremely positive. People are already pre-ordering the game, even though it comes out. Uh, like in fall of this year is basically when it's releasing, so people are already extremely hyped. There are a lot of reaction videos. Um, people on forums, you know, Pokemon forums seem to be very, very happy about this. So overall, the general consensus from the Pokemon community has been very positive. So that makes me happy, uh, especially after... Uh, there was a little bit of backlash for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee because when those games came out, some people were saying that uh, it was kind of like an in-between between a casual style Pokemon game that wasn't really, you know, meant for the actual fans of the series. But now a full-on main series game is coming out and it looks amazing, like it's a completely next generation Pokemon game. It has 3D graphics, the environments look beautiful. Probably one of the best looking Pokemon games uh, so far, so this is probably going to be a huge system seller for the Nintendo Switch. I bet a lot of kids this year are going to buy a Switch just to play Pokemon, and a lot of adults are going to be buying a Switch just to play Pokemon too, so really good announcement. Next, a brand new Overwatch character was announced this week, uh, Hero 30, or at least I think it was Hero 30 according to what Jeff Kaplan said in the announcement reveal video. Uh, his name is Batiste. He is a new support character in Overwatch, and even though he's a support character, he has some abilities which are kind of like a DPS, so I can see people using him kind of like a Moira, in a sense, like he has attacks that can be used, you know, uh, to help out other teammates, but he is a support character, most of his, like, abilities are support abilities really cool design and so far people have been very positive uh, about this announcement uh, i just think people are happy that it's not another dps character so yeah we got a new support character in overwatch batiste and i'm really happy can't wait to try him out play some games with him 
there are already gameplay videos on YouTube that you can check out if you're interested. But yeah, it's, it's amazing how Blizzard continues to update Overwatch with new free content for the fans that just keep on playing it. I absolutely love that about them, so definitely check out Batiste if you still play Overwatch. I know I do, so I'm going to be checking him out later. So next, we have some kind of strange news. A retailer in Europe accidentally leaked uh, ratings information for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. So yeah, it's a remastered version of Modern Warfare 2, the famous Call of Duty game. And this is really bizarre because I'm not sure if any of you remember, but when Infinite Warfare came out, there was a special, like, limited edition that you could get if, if you pre-ordered that included Infinite Warfare and the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare game, but remastered. And that was a pretty big, like, hit. A lot of people were just getting Infinite Warfare so they could play Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. And then later on, I think, um... Activision decided to release it separately so more people could access the Modern Warfare game. I remember there was some kind of controversy about that, but if this is true, this uh, retailer leaking this, this means that Modern Warfare, you know, the next Modern Warfare game is probably going to be coming out this year. So it's very, very likely then that if they do that, maybe they're going to have a special pre-order edition that includes Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. And I know a lot of people are going to be excited about that if if that actually turns out to be true. So, um, not sure, you know, nothing's been confirmed yet. <laughs> Activision has been completely silent about this whole thing. No, they've said nothing. Developers that work on the Modern Warfare series have, have said nothing. Nothing's been confirmed. But all we have is a leak in Europe. So it's pretty much confirmed at this point that Modern Warfare 2 Remastered exists. So that should be coming out later this year when uh, Call of Duty games usually come out. So that's pretty exciting. I'm not sure if I'll pick it up, but I did like playing Modern Warfare 2 when that came out. So, some news came out from Respawn and EA. So, everyone probably knows about Respawn Entertainment now because of uh, Apex Legends and Titanfall. Uh, well, specifically Apex Legends because that game just got really, really famous all of a sudden. But, yeah, Respawn Entertainment uh, is a developer that works for EA Games. And EA has the license for Star Wars. And they announced this week that they're going to release footage, like, for the first time for the upcoming Star Wars game, Jedi Fallen Order. So this is going to be a Star Wars game that takes place between the third and fourth movie in the series. And it's going to be shown for the first time on the 13th of April, so that's about a month away. I can't wait to see what they show off uh, you know, I'm a big Star Wars fan, and so far, I've been kind of disappointed with the Star Wars games we've been getting. You know, Battlefront 1, Battlefront 2 were okay, but I want to be, you know, a Jedi, fight Sith, and other enemies with a lightsaber. I've always loved the kind of older Star Wars games that just let you go on adventures, explore, you know, Knights of the Old Republic, that kind of thing, but... It seems like they're making a action-style Star Wars game. Respawn is in charge of it, so, you know, it's probably going to be amazing. So, can't wait to see some footage, and it's going to be shown in about a month or so, so can't wait for that. Hopefully it's awesome, and this was an announcement they gave out this week. So, there are more rumors about the PlayStation 5. Apparently, Sony is filing for, like, trademarks and patents for certain hardware architecture things that have to do with the PlayStation 5, including backwards compatibility. So, according to this rumor, Sony filed a patent for some kind of, like, backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, so it's very likely 
that the PlayStation 5 is going to be able to play PlayStation 4 games, which is awesome. I really hope that's the case. One of the things that I really didn't like about the PlayStation 4 was that it couldn't play PlayStation 3 games. Like, the PS3 could play PlayStation 1 and PS2 games, as long as you had one of the early versions of the PS3, but still, it's something that Sony has done since the beginning, so it was kind of disappointing to see them stop doing this with the PS4, so hopefully this rumor is true, and the PlayStation 5 is backwards compatible. So, there have been a lot of rumors this week about E3, and the future of a lot of game companies, so according to another rumor, that's kind of been confirmed, but it's still a rumor. Microsoft is going to be showing their next generation systems at E3 this year, and their two like upcoming consoles are currently codenamed Lockhart and Anaconda, so apparently the Lockhart is going to be a slightly less powerful version of the Anaconda, but they are both going to be the next big, next generation Xbox uh, game consoles. Uh, we have no official name for them yet, and there's just a little bit of information about these specs, and apparently they are very, very good according to people that leaked this information. Uh, some people actually design hardware and PC systems uh, got a look at the spec sheet for these uh, upcoming consoles and they had very good things to say so it seems like Microsoft is trying to make a very powerful system and a system that is not as powerful but somewhat on the lower end of power but it looks like next generation is going to be very very interesting moving forward and I can't wait to see the reveal of the Lockhart and Anaconda game consoles later this year. So next, the Dead or Alive 6 launch trailer came out this past week. And if you know the Dead or Alive series, it's a lot of fun, really crazy. Uh, honestly, this looks pretty cool. I, I'm not a big, you know fighting game expert or anything like that, but I do enjoy fighting games, even though I'm not good at them, I still love to play them, you know, Tekken, Street Fighter, Soul Calibur, and DOA, uh, Dead or Alive 6, looks really nice, uh, some of my favorite characters were shown off in this trailer, so check out the Dead or Alive 6 launch trailer, if you haven't seen it yet, the game looks really good, they put a lot of effort into developing this, and yeah, I, I love the Dead or Alive games, even though they kind of get a bad rap, a lot of people don't view them as seriously as they do other fighting games. I still have a lot of fun playing them. Next, we got a beta trailer for The Division 2. So The Division 2 is Ubisoft's next big game coming out very, very soon. And as of right now, there is an open beta, so if you're interested in checking out the Division 2, you can try to get into the beta, play some games. From what I heard online, uh, reception has been extremely positive. People are praising the gameplay, the shooting, everything in the game is like improved on from the original Division game. And it's a lot of fun to play. Um, I'm not that big into this kind of like team-based shooter, but I do know some friends that play it uh, or play the original Division and they had a lot of fun playing that, so it seems like the Division 2 is probably going to do very, very well once it releases, so check out this beta trailer and check out the game for yourself if you're interested because this is probably going to be a pretty good game if you're a fan of like third-person shooters like this. They they really increase the amount of stuff that you can do in the game. Lots of like improvements to the mechanics. Uh, the trailer actually goes over some of the things and what makes the Division 2 and the original game so much fun is that you can play it with your friends, team up, do missions, and that's that's where I feel like the most enjoyment comes out from the game is playing with people that you know, like your friends and stuff like that. 
Next, we have a lot of Nintendo Switch rumors. Seems like Nintendo has been getting a lot of like rumors for their system recently, their Switch, upcoming games and stuff like that. So let's get through some of these. Um, apparently, if any of you remember, last week I talked about how Microsoft and Nintendo have been like developing a relationship between each other. They're kind of like friends now, it seems. So, okay, it's been spotted on an online wholesale website that Ori and the Blind Forest is coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Now, for those that don't know, Ori and the Blind Forest was a, or is, a, like, Microsoft exclusive. It's only available on the Xbox One and PC. You cannot get it on the PlayStation 4 or Nintendo Switch. But according to this retailer leaking this, like, information, uh, apparently there is a Switch version that is going to be coming out, so this could be some kind of, like, deal that Nintendo and Microsoft have where exclusive games are going to be releasing on the Switch. So if that happens, that's awesome. Which brings me to my next piece of news where Cup... Head. Yes, Cuphead. I'm sure all of you heard about Cuphead. When that game came out, it was the like only thing people talked about for like a month. Uh, insanely difficult game that was made in the old style of like cartoon animation. Really cool art style. Very difficult game. It was an Xbox exclusive and it was also available on PC. But sadly, PlayStation 4 did not get the game, and neither did the uh, Nintendo Switch. But, according to this new leak, Cuphead could be coming to the Switch in the future. So, it seems like Microsoft, Nintendo, they're friends for some reason now. And if this rumor turns out to be true, we're going to be getting a lot of awesome games on the Switch very soon. So, next... Resident Evil is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Apparently, Resident Evil 0, Resident Evil Remake, and Resident Evil 4 are all coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, May 21st is the release date as of right now for this. Uh, there is going to be an Origins Collection cartridge. But sadly, Resident Evil 4 is only going to be available for download on the eShop. Resident Evil Zero is going to be a physical cartridge, but if you get the game, uh, it's going to come with a download code for the Resident Evil remake. So, kind of weird that they did it this way. I guess they want people to just download games now, but I don't know. It seems kind of weird that you buy a game to just download it then instead of just downloading it on the store to begin with. But I guess they feel like they need to sell a physical version just to get people to buy the game or something, but if you're interested, you're going to be able to play some of the best Resident Evil games. Uh, Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil Remake are fantastic up there with Resident Evil 2. So if you have a Switch, definitely pick up these games uh, in May once they release. And last piece of news is for Persona 5. So it's been leaked that Persona 5 is going to be releasing on the Nintendo Switch sometime later this year. Uh, all we have right now is a release window, Fall 2019. This is a leak, so it's not officially confirmed, but apparently Persona 5S is going to be a portable version of Persona 5 with enhanced features, you know, new personas, uh, additional story storyline, and added features, stuff like that. And this makes a lot of sense, considering that Joker from Persona 5 is going to be a DLC character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, even though he's never been on a Nintendo system. So now, if Persona 5 does come out on the Switch, uh, it makes sense that he's in Super Smash Brothers, so this is probably true, but it's not been confirmed yet, but uh, I, I think it's basically confirmed, even though Atlas 
and Sega have said absolutely nothing about this yet. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this ASMR gaming news video. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want to help out the channel, please be sure to go on patreon.com slash ASMR gaming. And with as little as $1 a month, you can help support the channel so we keep making videos just like this one. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time. So long.